the communist island. Uh, of course, this is a day that perhaps a lot of Cuban exiles out there have been waiting for for oh, nearly 50 years now. Well, let's take you back out to uh, just outside the Versailles restaurant. Uh, Joel Brown is there where he's talked to some of these folks, and, and you can see it, you can hear it, the, the reaction so far. Joel? Yeah, Craig, Belkis, it may be way too early. This may be only a temporary relinquishment of power from Fidel to Raul, but you would not know it by what you see in Little Havana tonight. I want you to see the celebration out here for yourself. These are live pictures on Calle Ocho. It is honking, it is clapping, it is screaming. This is celebration in the streets right now, Southwest 8th Street. Just an hour after the news starts to spread that Fidel has temporarily relinquished his power to his brother as he undergoes this intestinal surgery. This is the reaction that you're getting in Little Havana right now. A lot of screaming. People are very happy. For them, this represents a big moment that a lot of folks have been waiting a long time here. We are in arguably the heart of Miami's massive Cuban exile community. We got a sampling of interviews with folks, and you'll guess what they had to say. Here it is. For him to go up power, I have to be serious. Uh, my problem is that I really wouldn't want him to die not fast, a very slow, painful death. My personal feeling, if it's true, God, <laughs> I'd be the happiest man in the world. I think this gentleman is taking to take over, which is his brother. I don't think he has no power whatsoever. I spoke to my mom, and she's pretty jaded about it. I mean, she's like, oh, it's not going to make any difference. I don't care. I'm going to sleep. So, you know, I guess it's not, they're not expecting much to come of this. Nobody's really, you know, jumping up and down yet, I guess. No more people dying on the streets of Florida. So many things come to my to my mind that I don't know. I'm I'm about to start crying. So. <laughs> yeah. Is it enough to make you cry? It's very emotional to me. Yes. Let me just let you suck this in. You can kind of hear the hear the calls here, hear the hear the horns honking, see the Cuban flag flying in the sky here. This is a big moment. This is the end, of, or this is what people would like to think would be the end of a dictatorship and the end of what a lot of folks call tyranny, but it may be way too early for what we're seeing right here. We ran into one folk. This is Raymond here. This is his There's cousin Nor who just came over. Norbert who came over what, a, a six, months ago, six months ago with his, his son. son. And his son is without his mother because of Fidel. They and they, they can't get over. So what would Norbert like to say as he, as he hears this news? ¿Qué tú quieres decir? No, nada, que estoy celebrando esto aquí porque viniendo a apoyar todo este planteamiento que están haciendo la gente aquí porque lo estoy sufriendo en carne propia. Tengo mi hijo aquí hace seis meses, le escribimos al gobierno de Cuba pidiendo que dejara venir a su mamá y le negó la salida. That he's been here for six months and they seized the papers of his wife because she, because she had work over there and they wouldn't let her come here. You understand? And all her papers. So the possibility that Fidel may relinquish power and that we may see the end of it, this is this is real hope this, for him. This is for my entire family. My abuelo fought in, in the in the Bay of Pigs in the sixties to come here to make our family better. And now this we don't get him this. Raymond, I, I, I we don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted to make sure we saw